Now I will pass the microphone to David. Um, David will start uh, calling you to come here and to present the main results. And, uh, Jorge, ¿hay alguna cosa que quieras que diga? Sorry, but I don't speak English. Uh, eh, solo daros la bienvenida, eh, que aprovechéis estos días, y creo que es importante eh, escuchar a la gente, eh, volver a, a, a replantear nuestras profesiones en Architect, eh, pensando que eh, no sabemos todo, que sin escuchar no seremos nadie, y que para poder construir hay que construir siempre con los demás. Solo que aprovechéis este trabajo aquí, todos vosotros, y que sea el principio de una reflexión mucho más profunda que sirva para que la arqueología pueda aportar más a la sociedad. Solo eso. Eh, disfrutar de la ciudad y, y que sea muy interesante la estancia. Gracias. Eh, well, eh, Jorge gave eh, the welcome all of you to the town, also in the name of the mayor of Santiago, that, who was intended to be here, but at the very end. He couldn't for some other compromise. Um, he just mentioned and put emphasis in, one, in something that is quite familiar to all of you already. That is that doesn't matter who we are or doesn't matter what we do. The real matter is that we cannot do anything without talking with the people about what they want to uh, what they want to be done. Um, so uh, Jorge emphasized very much this idea and also emphasize the idea that as professionals, the first thing that we have to do is to hear, to hear uh, the words from the people to learn uh, new things and to know, to learn knowing how to do with it, how to cope with the things. Well, thank you very much, Jorge, for being here. And David, ah, you are here. Okay, thank you. Well, we have to go fast because <laughs> I have no time. Uh, well, this is our map. Uh, we will try uh, to have here during these days. Uh, you can add writings in the panels or photo or drawings in the map or in the panels also during these days, okay? But now uh, uh, we have to talk about the work. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed <laughs> the cold walk. And we, um, each group has uh, only five minutes uh, to expose the, the work and your likes or your unlikes or your itinerary, okay? Then the first group uh, I remember was the Toral group. Was, uh, yeah? <laughs> oh, and the winner is... <laughs> Thank you. We, uh, Plaza Taural must be, oh my God. <laughs> we went down here, it must be this one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, our, we identified ugly places um, near Plaza Galicia, which is the, the place of the bank here. And um, just beyond, and the very modern building near next uh, 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 bus station, and uh, the places uh, there was also on P uh, Plaza Taural um, a chocolate uh, shop that we didn't like because it was very touristy. But at, at the same time, we loved the place itself and uh, the building across here uh, with the balconies. And um, uh, when we went in our quarter. I didn't uh, identify any signs that uh, I uh, said that is World Heritage here or what is the history of these buildings, uh, but I, we know that the, in other places of the town there are many signs, and we are not necessarily want that there are also signs in this quarter, but we could imagine that an app would help to inform about the history. Um, the most interesting for us was the combination of heritage and real life taking place, especially in Plaza uh, Taural, where we could see a supermarket uh, next to the very nice uh, buildings. Um, but um, we, we would, what we would change is um, 
that uh, reg the regulations that obviously keep the, the face of the village uh, of the of the uh, would would stay in place, but also allow real life uh, to happen happen there. Um, archaeology uh, could contribute to show what is behind the town we, we see, what is underneath the town, uh, what was before that. And um, also archaeology could contribute um, to engage with the different stakeholders here in town and could engage in educational programs with schools and other places. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I think the next is uh, Alameda, no? Yep. Dahlia? No? Yeah? <laughs> it's your time. It is. Did, did I hear I had five minutes? No. No? Yeah, so our walk... It took us a while to get there, so that it was more the journey than the destination, you know. Um, so we, we started outside and we all met up as a group and introduced ourselves and uh, heard about where we were going to go. And we walked down through the arch and heard about how uh, the musicians, uh, they, they make an agreement of who gets to go busking there during the day. So last night some of us had heard the music and we, you know, that's nice, the acoustics are cool. <laughs> But uh, to hear that there's actually a structure and that the musicians are using the space uh, in a, almost a democratic way, that was quite cool. Um, we, we interviewed some people in the square and we asked a few people why they were there and we heard um, this guy from the Netherlands, he had like walked some 3,000 kilometers um, and he was taking photographs of two girls from South Korea who had walked 250 and the whole point of their journey was to georeference the spot they were at. I mean, they were photographing in front of the cathedral, but it was more the geolocation that was more important. So that was cool. Um, and then we walked uh, down into the park, and we heard about the different, uh, how do you say, different heritages. And that's, that's why we have a half a color here for one of the statues of the two Marias, because in one way, um, how do you say, it's, it's, it's not so clear, uh, the message nowadays, of, and it's not even signposted in English, uh, and it's almost, um, it's coming, oh god, I, five minutes, no, not five minutes. Uh, another thing about the park is how we learned about, there was kind of the different heritages uh, that were presented. We only heard them because we had a guide, even though he wasn't meant to be our guide, uh, but quite often the heritage presented is almost like a whitewashed or an official version, and there's many different heritages behind that can be told. So, yeah, and then we came home, and here we are, and I'll write an official report, and you can read it about it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think, uh, the next group, I think, is Fonseca. No? Let's see. Costas. Only five minutes, Costas. <laughs> five minutes. No, no, just one minute. Uh, I was moved from Alameda to Fonseca group and I was honored to present I don't know why so uh, Fonseca is here? Okay. Um, I will just uh, say our uh, jury <laughs> concerning the questions that you posed uh, as for the identification of World Heritage uh, signs somewhere uh, we didn't recognize or identify any obvious signs, uh, but according to our opinion, the whole town looks like a World Heritage uh, place. Um, we thought about that, and we think that maybe the city assumes that the visitors already know it, that is a World Heritage site, or uh, it's not so important for them to, to declare it, to tell it. Um, what was interesting for us the most? Uh, first of all, the urban structure. It was very inspiring and interesting to walk around. And, uh, we discussed a lot about the galleries, that wooden um, windows in front of the real windows of the houses. It was very interesting. Uh, 
also the architectural homogeneity and the transformations that it applies from the Middle Ages till uh, nowadays. Uh, what uh, things uh, should change? Um, what we thought is that the executive weight of the tu tourist oriented shops and the restaurants uh, and uh, move back to the old bars. Um, archaeology was not obvious at all. We couldn't see anything that mentioned that archaeology is here, is there. Uh, and of course, that's why we are here, because archaeology has a contribution to all these things. Uh, so, uh, the contribution should be uh, the provision of archaeological view, or of historical view, if you want, uh, of the town, and to highlight the evolution of time, uh, of what we can see today, with science, maps, interpretation, material, or, of all forms. Uh, do I have to mention some buildings, or...? Uh... It's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. The next group is the uh, Obradoiro group. Where is uh, Oli? <laughs> it's fast through here. Please. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Uh, so we were in the general vicinity of the cathedral. So we tried to not only walk around in the area of the cathedral and look at the sort of monumental buildings there, but go down some of the close by residential streets as well as sort of a, an alley um, to try and get a sense of what the neighborhood is like all together a little bit. So um, where we felt we could see the World Heritage obviously was the cathedral, the city council building, and the uh, hotel. Um, and also potentially in some of the facades on De La Orta Street uh, because they seemed very uniform, so we thought they were probably under some kind of planning protection. Um, what interested us the most was the use of urban space. So you've got these very monumental, important buildings next to uh, small residences and uh, urban gardens. Um, so what we would change, and this list went on for a while, um, <laughs> there was... a there was a real tension between obviously wanting some kind of interpretive help for people visiting the sites, but at the same time not necessarily wanting to uh, mar the visual experience of the, uh, especially kind of the more uh, uh, significant sites. Um, so there were ideas about having historical photos to give some kind of uh, context for how things had changed and text, um, sort of the typical things that you would expect, but because of that tension, we talked a little bit about how you could potentially use technology. Um, there's also no uh, real orientation, no way of orienting yourself to look at the different um, sites. Um, the um, what was really interesting is that the, the very central area seems quite, uh, it's not, there's not a lot of vitality and there don't seem to be much in the way of amenities for residents. So um, we really, so they're, they're the historical sites, but, and they're restaurants, but there's no place to buy bread. There's no place, you have to go out if you're going to be kind of part of the residential life of the city. Um, so uh, we were looking also at accessibility, what happens if you're a person with a disability and you're trying to look, uh, trying to see the sites, uh, and, but just a complete kind of lack of mixed use, essentially. Um, so what archaeology contributed to, there was nothing that we could actually observe. We did try and think of some things, but we couldn't really observe anything. Um, the ways that archaeology could contribute were... Uh, as you would expect from a group of archaeologists, there was lots of talk about trying to, discussion about how to uh, show the chronological development, um, have some kind of multi-temporal perspective, ways of con uh, conveying uncertainty. Um, but one of, the, one of Anna's really interesting ideas was about is there some way that we could build some kind of archaeological narrative about the city that was centered on a path uh, rather than focusing just on the buildings. 
uh, embracing the idea of pilgrimage in the city. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Holly. Uh, I think the next group is uh, Immaculada. No? Uh, Sarah? <laughs> it's hard to go. <laughs> Thank you. That's quite a nice example of uh, how I've found going about the city. <laughs> I get lost. So I, I take little uh, alleyways and think I'm going to get somewhere, and I don't. Um, okay, so um, we ripped up our questions. I didn't personally do this, but someone within the group ripped up our questions. Um, so basically what we, what we came to, we kind of went round a bit, um, and it was what I mentioned earlier about how archaeology gets lumped into other concepts. So we felt that there wasn't any archaeology or it wasn't visible. Um, and then people were saying, well, actually, we have buildings archaeology, which, of course, yes, you can have an archaeological approach to buildings. And certainly the buildings will have um, a history and they'll have developed. But in terms of actually, um, say, archaeological layers other than the, I guess, the stone city. Um, and that's what we were looking at. It's basically this branding of Santiago as this stone city. And then as we started to look at the historic pictures, we realized that actually some of that paving, which I would have just assumed, and this is my ignorance because I'm a prehistorian, I would have thought that it was part of the original character. Some of that paving actually wasn't there um, in the early part of the, of the 20th century. Um, is actually added. Um, there was open ground. So the square in front of the um, cathedral didn't have the paving. And we wouldn't, necessarily, we wouldn't have known that unless we were given the pictures. And I would have gone back and I would have told people at home, oh, it was brilliant, you know, the city and the paving and this stone, this idea. But it's, it's something that it's part of its branding. And that's what we were talking about, really. Um, does it serve Santiago to actually to brand itself as a multi-period city. Um, for me, the idea that uh, any city is of one period is a nonsense. Um, all cities are multi-period, but for this one, it's focused on a particular period and it's frozen it. Um, and this is quite, we discussed how this is symptomatic of a lot of UNESCO sites where it tends to fossilize um, it at a particular point in time. Um, so uh, we also saw the graffiti, so obviously the, the kind of slightly not well painted over graffiti and the, you know, that kind of tension beneath the surface um, and the different narratives that are going on there and the idea that you're trying to conceal them, but then again, not, not so well. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I think that might be it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now it's time to the group of uh, Camino. <laughs> Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you. So, as a group, we walked around the area called uh, Camino. This is rather a small area which consists of this particular boundary here. So what we realized or observed, let's say, experienced, that it, the area has um, quite potential for characterized with, by um, public quasi green green spaces and uh, contemporary and modern architecture in contrast to the architectural language of the old town. So the area is towards a little bit of the edge of the um, town. So in terms of what we liked or uh, di disliked, we thought um, the particularly the green spaces has, have uh, much more potential to show and to be a part of the uh, town. Because as you can see, it's quite dense uh, uh, planning in the old town. And these are one of the few, at least the first, when you go towards north, one of the few um, more breathing rooms and um, green areas, which could be much more integrated within the town and 
um, have much more potential to work on. Particularly, we didn't like um, the modern intervention here, which was a bus garage, we believe, part of a school there. But we particularly like the contrast of a contemporary architecture of the, is it the contemporary art museum here, and the contrast with the uh, older language of the build, architectural language of, uh, of the building just behind it. Um, towards down here, this particular street uh, has a, um, a good unified architectural language and has good vistas when you walk around. And coming down here, uh, there were a bit of a divided little public spaces in which one of them, uh, there was a message written on the ground as a, about a European identity, which we thought was a good intervention in the um, town's urban planning. Um, what we realized is that, um, as I emphasize it again, that there was a uh, good potential of public spaces which is not particularly used. This is also, I believe, we believe, um, due to the uh, season of the year when um, during more warmer days in summer there was much more participation in the public spaces with um, temporary markets but in, during winter we don't really see it and the squares leave a bit of an empty space without really many people around um, but apart from that particularly in terms of the contemporary architecture this area has the potential to add a different layer in the town's um, heritage, which sort of focuses on a particular period and particular architectural language. But this is a great potential to um, differentiate different time periods and um, architectural um, styles within the town. And with that note... Thank you, Mr. Pak. Well. And the last group is uh, the group of Cervantes. Ah, it's a rock, it's a rock. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not the last. I will explain the way, and he will explain the answer the questions. So we started um, there. Then we went to the, to the forbidden place. <laughs> you have to go through a, a really bad gate, which is closing all the time. So we dislike this place. I, we like, I mean, we like the, the, the garden, but not the, the gate. And then we went to a really nice garden here. We went to up there. We had a really nice site on the cloister and also on the countryside. I really appreciate it. I think you too. <laughs> then we went down. We stopped in front of the Casa Ocupada uh, squat. It was also nice. We liked the place. And then we went to the Cervantes Plaza. In, yeah, we went through, the, through there. We came back here and we went back to the New Yorking factory. And, ah, uh, no, we went to, uh, I was forgetting the most important part. We went to a bar <laughs> to, <laughs> to get to know each other a little bit better. That was the point. That was the instructions. So we did it. And it was a really, really nice bar here. We appreciate it too. Como? Camalea bar. Si. Tu te vas. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer the question that we had. Um, uh, there were no people, just the bartender at the Camalea bar. Uh, she was very nice with us, so, and also the coffee and the chocolate, uh, you should know. Uh, we have sorted the people that we have seen in inhabitants and, and tourists. Uh, we saw one pilgrim. Yeah, yeah, yeah we saw one pilgrim. Yeah. <laughs> a, a hippie one pilgrim. <laughs> and also there were some, um, uh, it's not right, but uh, uh, misfits, uh, some misfits. Uh, that's bad, but uh, well, they were there. Uh, also, uh, we found a, a link with the archaeology and the present. Uh, we we could uh, we could read uh, the stone over over you are walking on. Uh, 
it is like a, a thousand years old, so uh, you have to preserve it. Um, what more? Uh, well, we saw the UNESCO sign, and it was good to see it. And that's all. Sorry about my English. <laughs> and Thank you. I think it's the, uh, the last group, yeah? maybe, Cervantes, yeah? Thank you. So, uh, our, my group is the Cervantes group, and we work from uh, uh, Praza de Cervantes uh, until uh, Praza Porta Camino, and uh, we came back. So, from here to here, yeah. And the first, in the first part we, of the work, we uh, find uh, we found uh, the um, hot spot we like more. Once because we we like a lot the the starting point, the uh, Cervantes Square, uh, because it is a, a place where people uh, usually meet, as uh, uh, Lupe said, has. And then we move uh, to the uh, Souls Chapel. And uh, we, we like uh, a lot the decoration uh, on the door because it is very original. And we move uh, then to the, um, a, sorry, a very ancient uh, building, I think, uh, with the Moorish uh, door. And uh, we like uh, um, this uh, door because it's uh, yeah, very original uh, and uh, it, uh, it remembers us, uh, the, yeah, the Arabs. So it uh, it looks as uh, it looks uh, some uh, as an um, ancient uh, um, yeah thing uh, in the, the city. Um, then we move to the uh, yeah outside uh, the ancient uh, uh, city walls that were here, and uh, we uh, until the sign uh, the, the UNESCO uh, sign, and uh, as, uh, we like the new intervention with the bench. But we don't like a lot the design properly because uh, we I think we uh, um, we want more information about uh, this um, uh, this sign and uh, we want more informa information about uh, uh, why, for example, the city has been design uh, has been uh, chosen for uh, this uh, UNESCO um, yeah, uh, role. So uh, yeah. Uh, then we come back, uh, uh, we go to the Slaughter House, and uh, Lupe uh, t told us the story of this house. And um, it is a house that is not uh, uh, very well looking, uh, but um, she told us that it's very important for the local, uh, for uh, some, some um, different local communities that um, re uh, recognize that in this house uh, a, 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 um, a role of um, a cultural role because they meet there, um, they usually meet there and do things there. But uh, as a tourist and as a visitor, uh, we can know this uh, this uh, this uh, value, and so maybe uh, it can be explained in uh, in some way. Then uh, we can we move to the yeah we move, we move back and at certain point we we met a strange thing because. Uh, uh, outside the uh, window, um, a lot of uh, um, rubbish, rubbish uh, uh, sheets, plain, plenty of rubbish uh, come down uh, from a window. I don't know how to explain well, but uh, yeah, it's, it was a surprise, but uh, yeah, maybe I, I don't know why people have to put the rubbish uh, outside the windows in this way. So, okay, just uh, a folkloristic uh, <laughs> point of view. And then, okay, we, we come back uh, to the um, Cervantes uh, Square. And so, okay, we, we have this uh, work, uh, and uh, we like the city. Not, not many people uh, outside. Uh, Lupe told us that uh, it was the siesta time, but uh, okay. <laughs> uh, we like to have this, uh, this work. <laughs> Thank you. Well. Any comments uh, about the... Oh, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Well, it's time to finish now. Then, uh, well, don't forget that we have the map during these days and the panels for, to follow, to fill. And, uh, well, we hope that you have... Sorry? Yeah. <laughs>
We hope you have uh, enjoyed the activity. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you, Alicia, for the work behind the activity. And see you tomorrow. We have to work. <laughs> Thank you. Only one thing more, but only a, a little thing that uh, we would like to, to rethink together is the idea that the city, the people live, the 70 percent of the people live in cities today. Cities today in town, small, big towns, and I think archaeologists work a little in the city. We need to work more and more in the cities and to rethink the way to understand uh, the city and to make city and uh, nothing else. Thank you very much.